My last video on Glastonbury looked at the mythology and gruesome history of Glastonbury Tor. This video will examine legends associated with Glastonbury Abbey, but will also take in the Tor and the area in general. The main legend most people associate with the Abbey is that it is the burial place of a very famous royal couple who may or may not have existed. I speak, of course, of King Arthur and Queen Guinevere. The area has been associated with Arthurian mythology ever since the alleged discovery of two coffins labelled as belonging to Arthur and his queen in 1191, although, as I stated previously, this discovery could have been a con to try to entice pilgrims and their cash to the abbey. However, there are other Arthurian links. These include the original name of Glastonbury Tor, Yinis Yerafalon, meaning the Isle of Avalon, in the original Britonic language of the area. The 12th and 13th century chronicler, Gerald of Wales, believed it was the Avalon referred to in Arthurian legend, but there is another, even more startling legend associated with the site. That of the alleged visit of Joseph of Arimathea to Glastonbury. Joseph, who was Jesus Christ's great uncle, could have been a metal trader, and if that was the case, he would have had a professional interest in Britain, as it was well known for its abundance of tin, an essential component in making bronze. Joseph was also alleged to have been the bearer of the cup used at the Last Supper that caught drops of Christ's blood at the crucifixion, the mythical Holy Grail, and legend has it that he brought the grail to Glastonbury. My previous video on the Chalice Well looks into this legend. The grounds of Glastonbury Abbey also contains the Glastonbury Thorn, a tree that flowers twice a year around Christmas and Easter. This tree is said to be a descendant of the original thorn that was destroyed by fire by po-faced Puritans during the English Civil War. The current thorn was said to have been grown from sprigs of the original, carefully and secretly guarded by protectors. The original tree is said to have spontaneously sprouted on Weiriol Hill from the staff of Joseph of Arimathea after his journey to Glastonbury. But the concept of Joseph's presence in Glastonbury remains controversial. The thorn was first mentioned in a pamphlet published by Richard Pinson in 1520 called Life of Joseph of Arimathea, which was almost certainly commissioned by Glastonbury Abbey, lending weight to the notion that it may have been a yarn to bring in the lucrative pilgrimage trade. A custom persists, which probably dates from the 17th century, where a budded branch of the Glastonbury Thorn is sent to the Sovereign each year at Christmas. However, there is an even more outlandish claim that Jesus Christ himself visited Glastonbury. The legend is recalled in William Blake's poem, Jerusalem, which is best known today as a stirring hymn. It features the lyrics, And did those feet in ancient time walk upon England's mountains green? and was the Holy Lamb of God on England's pleasant pastures seen. The legend goes that an infant Jesus was brought along by Joseph of Arimathea, possibly on one of his metal trading expeditions from the Middle East. It is also rumoured that Joseph is buried somewhere in the Abbey and helped to establish the first church in the British Isles at the site. A holy spring at part of the site is also called St Joseph's Well and is renowned for healing properties. It remains a place of pilgrimage to this day. The expansive ruined abbey is a wonderful place and I visited in bright early summer sunshine which made for a stunning experience. The dramatic ruined abbey set amongst sprawling gardens, some cultivated, some overgrown, is something to behold. And despite my natural scepticism, it is difficult not to get swept up in the weight of history, myth, folklore and legend associated with this iconic location. So, is King Arthur buried here? Is Joseph of Arimathea buried here? Did Joseph ever visit? Did Jesus ever walk upon England's mountains green? These are currently unanswerable questions, but they are still well worth asking. The magic of a quest for the Holy Grail is in the looking, not necessarily in the finding. The search is an end in itself. I think I'll keep on looking. That's it for this video. Don't forget to like, share and most importantly subscribe. Thank you for watching.